now we are going to be reading from uh, from the user keyboard, uh, the input from the user. Uh, let's get rid of this and let's create a scanner. Uh, scanner, and I wanted to show you this. When you're typing scanner, it offers you here, if you click enter, this line gets added automatically. If I get rid of that line, something goes red. It's complaining. What is this? <laughs> Java is like, what, what is this? I don't know. Uh, the reason for that is that we need to include it. We need to tell it, hey, what scanner are you referring to? Because we can create our own class called scanner. Uh, so now if I add that line back, it will stop complaining. What does this mean? Well, as you may, maybe have seen, or if you haven't, I'll go briefly over that. We have packages in Java. So packages are basically, let's call similar to folders. So, so you're, you're, you're creating something in some folder and it's really good when you have like dozens of classes, for example, uh, in some bigger projects, if I just open up this here and you can see this is my package. And uh, if I wanted to add another package, I can do that by clicking a new package and let's call this package something. And inside of that package, I can add some different classes. For example, let's say I wanted to create an app for printing something to the screen. Uh, I could add all the classes that uh, do that here, but then somebody else can use those classes in some other application. He's making something completely different and uh, he wants to print output to the screen, right? And he can just include this by saying import and what are you importing? You're basically including some classes for, from a different package into your own package. So uh, what we're doing here, Java comes with a bunch of classes that are already that already exist right so um, this is one this is the one that we're going to be using to read from the keyboard and we need to tell java what class we're referring to exactly and this is the one it's it's in the package called java.util that's the package and this is the name of the of the class that we need to include right so uh we have included that so basically there's two ways of doing it we can do it manually by saying import and if we know the the package name by heart which is hardly something that we're going to know you know but let's just say we do java.util.scanner it's already you know giving us a bunch of things here and there this is one way to do it the other way to do it which is much easier when we're typing we just type a part of the name and Java, Java is already, I mean, this is IntelliJ. IntelliJ is already giving us, this is everything that it found that it, it that contains scan in, in its name. This is the one with, that we want. We just hit enter and it automatically adds this line. And one more thing, if I just hit alt, it, you, you can see when I hover over the other, it just gives me this little red thingy. And that red thingy almost always has some smart solutions for us. This is all the solutions here. It says import class is the first solution. Yeah, let's just do that. And it adds the line automatically. So those are the couple of ways that we can include, you know, import the, the, the unknown class uh, inside of our program. So now <laughs> let's get back to the main topic. I, I drift away sometimes, but I hope uh, that you find found this useful. Uh, we can name it scanner. It doesn't matter what we name it. We can name it keyboard. We can name it keyboard. We can name it input. Those are the most common names we can, let's leave it at the input. We're gonna be creating a new scanner and we need to give it a source. What's it going to be reading from? So it's going to be reading from system.in. And uh, we, this is just the way to, to tell it, hey, read from the keyboard. That's our input uh, for this. So, uh, it says it's a special object for data input. It refers to the keyboard. I am assuming if you if you run this on on like some <laughs> I don't know clock or or watch that runs Java system dot in would refer to something else. So, so uh, now let's check out how we can actually read the input from the from the keyboard. So let's say string uh, user input equals input, and now you can see why input might have been a bad name. Let's name it something else keyboard 
Uh, one more short digression that I wanted to say, always name your variables uh, like this. Don't name, it, don't name your variable K or S because <laughs> when, you're, when you're writing a program, it will probably have more than like five lines. It will have like 50, 100 lines or maybe 5,000 lines. And if you're gonna be using this S in a bunch of places, what is S? Is it a string? Is it a scanner? Just name it scanner or keyboard or something that'll, that'll be very intuitive to you what, what it refers to. Uh, if I name this S, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll know because I'm writing a really short program. But if I write user input, it's even better because the, the sole name user input tells me what it is. It's something that the user is going to give us, you know. So always try to make your lives easier by, by naming your variables variables properly. Uh, for example, I had a friend in high school who, who named his variables like A, B, C, and he was much better in programming than I was. But when you see his program, it would be like A times B plus C. And, you know, it's just very confusing. It, it's much better to name your variables, for example, counter. It's It immediately refers to you're counting something. You, you know, It's a counter. You know what you're doing with it, you know, or string name, string name rather than S, you know, it's an, it's a name, it, it's a counter, it's an age, you know, name your variables properly and you will save yourself a bunch of time later in your programming career. Okay, back to the original topic, sorry. Uh, let's see, we need to figure out uh, some of the methods from the scanner class. Okay, uh, it can read the input so let's just create a string called user input again and let's just say keyboard dot and it gives us a bunch of methods we'll just use next next is the method or we can use next or next line let's first check out next line and let's just print out something you typed and then plus user input let's just literally repeat what the user has typed but let's see if we run this, you can see now that the program is still running. That's one thing that I wanted to show you. If we uh, get rid of this line temporarily, and we have to get rid of the other one as well because it's complaining, uh, I have to stop the program on this little red thingy. If I run the program now, you can see that it always says pro process finished, you know, so it means that the whole program has ran and that's it. I, I don't even, I can't even click this because it's not running. But if I, uh, if I, uh, just uncomment these two lines. Uh, when I run the program now, you will see a difference. Uh, the program is still running, so I can hit stop to, to, to you know, prematurely execute, uh, to, to prematurely kill the program. You can see this little uh, green dot here. And I think you can see it here, but I can't because of the screen sharing controls, but it should be here as well in this area. Uh, it, it means that the program is still running, it's waiting. Why? Well, we need to input something, right? So. It's waiting for our input. And uh, that, that's what it does here on this next line uh, function call, right, method call. So if I input something, hello there, and I hit enter, and now the program actually finishes. So let's see what happened here. I typed something, let's run again. Shift F10. Hi there, guys. And nothing happens still, but if I hit enter, that means I have finished my line of input, and now it stores that into user input variable, and it just concatenates that with this, and it prints everything out, and the program finishes. So let's, for example, say, let's see the difference between next and next line. Uh, next line will give us everything up to the next, up to the enter click, you know, up to the next line. But let's check out what happens when we use next. If I say hi there, guys, and hit enter, it says you typed hi. Well, it basically uses space as the uh, separator. So if I do like, say, uh, second, second, let's do keyboard next, and now re repeat this again. Hi there, guys. You typed hi. Well, of course I did, but let's add second. I forgot that. Uh, and rerun. Hi there, guys. And it says you typed hi there. Okay, so the difference between next line and next is maybe uh, not that obvious, but uh, 
The difference is next just reads the first thing, and then when there's a space, it stops there. And as you've seen, we have two nexts. So this one reads the second word, this one reads the first word, and the third word doesn't go anywhere. We just get disregarded, right? So uh, sometimes we're going to be using next, sometimes we're going to be using next line. Uh, we'll, we'll see, it depends on what we need to do. But those are the two ways that we can read a string from, uh, from our keyboard. Uh, what we want to see now is we want to see how to read other data types from the keyboard. So let's get rid of this and this. And now let's do int age, for example. And that's going to be keyboard. And it's it's already, IntelliJ already knows because this is a type int, it's giving us the first method. It thinks that this method will be the best for us. And it actually is. Uh, it's next int. How does it know that? Because next int returns an integer, right? So if we try to do next line here, well, it's complaining because next line returns a string. And these errors are also very useful. It says require type int provided string. Uh, what that means is we're giving it a string and we told it that age is an integer. Yeah, so let's just get rid of that error by using next int. Uh, so now if you run the program, let's first print something out. Your age is plus age. And let's add something more so we can make our program nicer. Let's say, please enter your age. Just so it prints out that message before, you know, it's a much nicer program now, I would say. Please enter your age, 28. Your age is 28. Okay. So again, let's run this again, but now let's enter something else. Of course, it will crash. I just wanted to show you this as well. Yeah, it's pretty much similar story to integer parse int that we had uh, here. If you remember when we when we provided uh, improper integer, it just crashed, the same thing happens here. So yeah, we need to provide an integer when we're, when we're using next int, it's pretty much the same thing. So if I put some other integer here, yeah, it'll just work. And if I put something that's not an integer, it will not work properly. Uh, there is, Two things that we could have done here. We could have also, I mean, we could have said next int. The other way that we could have done it is we could have said string like imp, string input equals keyboard dot next or next line. And then we could have said int age two equals input, uh, sorry, integer dot parse int of input. This would pretty much be the, the, the same as this. Right. <clears throat> 